Coming up on ATV News, a new policy is out to clear up the bad air in Logan. But will it be enough? There was a milk spill at the airport. And no, it wasn't a pilot's lunch. We'll show you what led to one big mess and two people being sent to the hospital. Blue Zone and its less than loved history is being replaced. We'll show you what USU is doing for your internet browsing. It's cold out here. We'll see if this inversion is going to clear up. Also, the seven day forecast. In sports, I'll show you if a buzzer beater went in or out when the USU women's basketball team took on Boise State and the men's tennis team opens up at home. All of that and more right now. Welcome to the first ATV news of the semester. I'm Bradley Wells. And I'm Tamara Bradley. Well, you know how the saying goes, it's no use crying over spilt milk. But in this case, it was a bit more expensive and time consuming to clean up. A semi truck from Dairy Way Transportation carrying 5,000 gallons of milk tipped over Tuesday morning. The driver turned onto 2400 West and Airport Road going too fast. It crashed into a telephone pole and the milk spilt into an irrigation ditch. An electric company came to fix the pole and Bear River Health Department pumped the milk out of the water. Later that afternoon, the driver and a passenger climbed out of the truck and were taken to Logan Regional Hospital with minor injuries, leaving the driver's mother relieved it wasn't more. He called me and I got here as fast as I could and they already had him loaded. Um, I'm not sure the exact details. Um, I think his load shifted as he came around the corner and the trailer took him over and they went into the ditch and slid. The driver and passenger were not wearing seatbelts and were cited for speeding. Though it isn't pleasant, most of us are used to Logan's winter inversion. But starting this year, Cash Valley automobile owners will hopefully drive a little easier knowing they aren't contributing to the haze as much as they might have been. As of January 1st, the Environmental Protection Agency has asked the Bear River Health Department to make sure that all vehicles registered in Cache Valley undergo emissions testing every other year. The emissions testing, it's a test for the vehicles to see how much pollutants are coming either out of the tailpipe or to verify that the onboard computer system is working properly that controls the emissions. The goal of the program is to get us back below the standard that's been set by EPA and that standard is 35 micrograms per cubic meter of PM2.5. You've already heard of PM2.5, the particulate matter that settles over our valleys and into our lungs during an inversion. You know to stay inside and carpool on a red air day. Here's what else you need to do to get your car ready for emissions. We do have a great website that you can look at and you can link to it directly at aircheckcash.com and we're relying on the expertise of some mechanics around town to, to know how to make some adjustments and, and remedy the problem. It basically just come in a month before maybe and get just a, just a test done, just to see exactly what's going on with the car to see if it needs anything. Before that, the only indication that you would have that your car is going to fail is a check engine light. Yeah, if the vehicle fails the emissions test, you get it repaired and then you have it retested. Honestly, I think it's a good thing, both business-wise and for people's cars. I think it's going to be a, a good change for Cash Valley. David Stewart, ATV News. If you want to find the testing center nearest you, go to aircheckcash.com. USU is changing the way you use the internet. Our Ileana, Ileana Barunda is live to tell us more about how the university is updating the way you surf the web. Ileana? Thanks, Bradley. Students often complain about the slow connectivity and poor speeds of Blue Zone, but USU has realized that more students are bringing more devices to campus and therefore it was time for a new change. There's a new way to use the internet on Utah State's campus. The network is called Edgero and will be available on Blue Zone Secure. The reason for upgrading our network was because we needed to increase capacity and also um, provide access to newer devices, new technologies and things like that. We needed to be in the forefront. So we're going from roughly 1,200 access points up to a little over 3,500 access points for density. You can connect to Wi-Fi anywhere on campus, even here in the library. 
and here, and even here. Can you see me now? Good. Students say they dislike the current network. Trying to reload the screen I was on all the time, and it just gave me the could not connect to the internet. And the new network isn't just for when you're at USU. It's for traveling, like when you visit another institution that has Eduroam as an SSID, it will automatically know who you are because you've been registered here at USU. Because of the amount of devices that the students are carrying and the amount of students that want to get on in a concentrated area, that's why we have to, in some areas, double or triple the amount of access points that are available. I've noticed that this semester I haven't had any problems. It's been faster and it's been pretty good. So. I'm happy about the change. It will be faster for the students. Sorry. Installation has already started where students are the most, the TSC and the library. You can access the new network from computer labs like this, but be sure to use Blue Zone Secure and not the guest access. All buildings will have full connectivity by fall 2014. Back to you, Bradley. Thanks, Ileana. Come Coming up after the break, construction seems pretty much constant on campus, but one group of athletes will have a new home sooner than later. And USU has officially become even more of a blue campus, a Pepsi blue, but it is a, it is a, is it a change people are liking? Talk Center, we have pep talkers standing by to get you motivated for your GED diploma. Text the name Terry to 69222 for a sympathetic pep talk. You show people what you really are. Or for a gentle pep talk, text the name Deborah. You know you're going to make people very proud of you. And if that's not enough, text the name Danny for an extreme pep talk. Prove everyone wrong. Show them you're the boss. Get your GED pep talk and find free GED classes. Text the name of the person you want a pep talk from to 69222. Thanks for calling the GED Pep Talk Center. Jerry Stiller speaking. Your level seven in your face pep talk. I can keep pushing. Believe me, I'm good at it. Once you've got your GED diploma, you'll feel so good about yourself. You come. Mr. Trejo, can I transfer this guy to you? He needs something a little more... Persuasive? Yes! Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk. Don't look at me. Your hair's a bit frizzy today. Aww. You should pick that up. <laughs> oh, you're such a dork. Loser. Here, let me help you with that. Oops. <laughs> Every day, kids witness bullying. Oh, look. Your crush is looking at you. <laughs> Poor you. <laughs> they want to help, but don't know how. See, no one here is going to help you. because no one. Teach your kids you. how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov. Welcome back. A new building going up on campus is on track to be open in time for USU Volleyball's upcoming season. In, in the Wayne Estes Center career, will be the I've new home of the USU women's you volleyball team. To kind of really be involved with this kind of a project very often, if at all, in your career. And from the design process to the whole thing, it's probably been about three years in that thing, but it's been in the making for a number of years. Sorry about the technical difficulties we're having here. The Wayne Estes Center will be the new home of the USU women's volleyball team, and the building is in front of the Spectrum at 900 North and 800 East. Women's volleyball head coach Grayson DeBose has been a part of the construction process from the beginning. It may seem like a lot of construction is going on around campus, but there's one building that is finally done. The new Athletic Weights building is complete after close to two years of construction. The building is just north of Romney Stadium, right up against 800 East, placed at a convenient location for the athletes. Even though only the weights part of the building is complete, coaches and athletes moved into the new building in July, and so far they are loving the new space. It's, it's uh, incredible uh, design put together extremely well. Um, the, you know, the open floor plan really allows you to do anything that you'd want to do. I mean, we're really limited by nothing in here. 
um, which is really all a, a coach could or, or an athlete could ask for. With some new training equipment and four times the room their old building had, coaches say they are already seeing an improvement in athlete performance since moving to the new building. Coaches expect to continue seeing positive changes as they adjust to their new space. Well, I don't know if you ski or snowboard much, but I know that when, after a long day on the slopes, I am so tired by the end. I don't want to walk all the way back to my car. It's just awful. Yeah, I, I haven't skied in a long time, but I remember those and it was, it was not enjoyable. Yeah. But the USU Outdoor Recreation Program has an answer for people like you. <laughs> Becky Eisenhower went out to give us a little insight to what people call the yurt. Backcountry skiing is one of the many activities students can get involved with at the yurt. Sponsored by the Outdoor Recreation Program, the yurt provides students with their own private getaway from the usual winter scene. The trailhead starts about 15 miles from Utah State's campus. From there, it's about a five mile hike straight up the mountainside to get to the yurt. Most groups come and stay for the weekend, which requires a lot of preparation to ensure a fun and safe weekend. The smaller bag. To make their packs more compact, trip leaders and participants repackage the food into smaller containers. So we are cracking some eggs in this so that we carry them without having them all break all over the place in our packs. It's uh, three trip leaders, myself, Cole, and Lucas are the trip leaders, and uh, then five participants. I'm expecting to go out, hang out hike around in the wilderness and hopefully ski some powder. There's just amazing skiing up there. You know, it's right in the edge of the Mount Naomi Wilderness, Cottonwood Canyon. You know, it's, it's, a, it's very remote for our mountains. Not a lot of people know where this is because it's very difficult to get to, but that's why it's so fun. You know? It is a world difference from resort skiing. And it just, again, builds confidence. It builds teamwork and uh, just a great entity for the university. Becky Eisenhower, ATV News. Students can make reservations at the yurt by visiting the ORP on campus or online at the USU website. A new shade of blue has come to campus and some Utah, Utah State students are happy with the change. Pepsi has taken over campus. Coca-Cola drinking fountains, vending machines and advertising all changed over winter break. Each of the cafes and restaurants on campus switched from Coca-Cola to Pepsi soda fountains after 12 years of being a Coke campus. There have been mixed feelings about the change, but many students say they are pleased. I think it's great because now I can get Mountain Dew anywhere. I'm, I'm happy about the change. My favorite drink is Pepsi. Uh, I didn't really notice it, except for the fact that, you know, now, I've really, now all the cups are blue. With the new switch in soda, these vending machines allow credit cards as well as larger bills. Coming up next, David Stewart has your Cache Valley weather report. The current temperature in Logan is 27 degrees. People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today I'm just an aluminum can. One day, I could be a stadium. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Look at me. Hey. Raymond, look at Mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Maybe he can't hear us. Ooh. Maybe we're not stimulating him enough. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better.
Welcome back to ATV News. So, David, how about the weather out there? It's getting crazy, I feel like. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but the air is pretty crummy. It yeah, is. It's really thick out there. It makes it really hard to breathe. Yeah, it's been pretty hard to breathe for a couple weeks now, and I don't think it's going to be getting better anytime soon. Oh. Here's the thing. The last few weeks, we've had the air quality that's unhealthy for sensitive groups. Um, that's because it's been our red air day. We've had some of the worst air in the nation. You know, actually, the air is pretty thick, but if you stay inside and carpool, that could help. Hopping over to our national radar here, I've got, I'm going to, we've got, uh, we'll just start on the east coast here uh, with the blizzard that shut down the schools in New Jersey and Philadelphia. It's blowing out to sea now though, so hopefully Ariel brought a coat. Um, we're going to hop on over here, blow through the Midwest, not a lot's going on. We've got ourselves nothing really going on over here in California either. They've got that blizzard. No, they've got that drought. And it's not going to be, it, nothing's going to help that right now. The firefighters are kind of going to have to work on that without the help of the rain. However, we do have something exciting coming in up here from Canada, blowing on down. We've got a little storm front on its way, and hopefully it's going to push that inversion aside. And as it goes, let's bring it on home to Utah. Now, there's not a heck of a lot going on here right now. I'm hoping this storm will uh, blow some clean air through, or at least blow that inversion out for just a minute, because it's kind of our last chance for clean air for at least a week. If we'll uh, hop on over to the seven day, uh, looks like we've got tonight, I'm sorry, tonight we've got that storm blowing through. It's not going to drop a lot of snow, only about 20%, but that's our last chance for clean air until we get to next fr Tuesday. The rest of the week is going to probably fill in with an inversion again. So have fun with that, you guys. I appreciate the storm coming through. I really would like to thank it for its help. <laughs> but I'm not entirely sure that it's going to drop a lot of snow for us. No snow yeah. this no. time? No. Um, mm. doesn't, it's kind of bad. We're running out of snow here. Yeah, the snow's melting and the air's crummy. Um, we'll have maybe some clean air tonight. Hopefully, I mean, luckily all the sports right now are indoors. Yeah, yeah for sure. True. Yeah, good thing all sports are indoors because we have a big weekend coming up. Um, and the bad weather is just not good for um, the fans and the athletes. But before we get into next week, uh, let's talk about, let's recap last week's action after the break. Look at me. Hey. Raymond, look at mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Maybe he can't hear us. Ooh. Maybe we're not stimulating him enough. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. and you get to know a few things. Like, I know she does strange tricks for no treats. But the one thing I will never for the life of me know is how she gets so tiny and inside that box. Natalie, how do you get so tiny? There we go. Welcome back. I'm Jason Borba, and uh, it feels good to be back with you for ATV Sports. It was a long break, so hopefully I'm not too rusty for you guys. On Saturday, the men's basketball team hit the road to take on Boise State Broncos. The Aggies found themselves down by 12 in the first half, but fought back, to def fought back and cut the deficit to three at halftime. With a little over a minute left, USU led 74 to 70, but couldn't hold on as Derek Marks and BSU came from behind to win 78-74. The loss puts USU at 12 and 5, and they are 2 and 3 in the Mountain West. The Aggies will look to end their three-game road losing streak tonight when they take on the Rebels of UNLV.
And we're just going to get straight into the highlights, it looks like, right here. Um, Jennifer Schlott's going to take it to the hoop in, and to cut the lead. The Broncos were winning, and uh, Jennifer Schlott is going to, here she hits a layup that gives the Aggies the lead, but they would not hold on because their desperation three by Jasmine Porter is going to fall just short. The Aggies would lose a nail biter to the Broncos. I take total. I take total responsibility for the loss at Colorado State. Um, terrible game plan on my part, and I put our girls in a in a corner and and uh, didn't have a chance. Uh, tonight is. I'll put this one on the girls. Utah State gave up 16 offensive boards to the Broncos while only ga gathering five of their own. The loss. Puts the Aggies at 2-3 and three in conference and 6th place in the standings. USU will host UNLV tonight at 7. Staying indoors, we head over to the tennis court. The Utah State men's tennis team lost to BYU earlier this year, and the Aggies were looking to rebound against Idaho State in their first home match of the season. To get people to come to show their support, the team provided pizza and prizes for the fans. The Aggies started off hot by winning three doubles matches and earning one point toward their total score. Things got a little bit more interesting in singles play, but when, well, while both teams won two of their first four matches, bringing the aggregate total to 3-2 in favor of the Aggies. Freshman Dennis Baumgartner made quick work of his opponent, winning in straight sets 6-2, 6-3. The Aggies also got win wins from Matt Sweet, Andrew Whiting, and Tomas Kosmai as they went on to win the match with a total team score of 5-2. to two. Last years there were like no people here, but I think that shows that we are in a good way. If we get that many people coming to our match, and if you're on the court, it feels awesome. Every match won by the Aggies was in straight sets, but the two losses did come in three sets. The 1-1 one -on -one Aggies traveled to Las Cruces, New Mexico this weekend to take on Texas A&M, Corpus Christi, and New Mexico State. It was championship weekend in the NFL. On Sunday, the Patriots took on the Broncos and the Seahawks hosted the 49ers. The Broncos beat the Patriots 26-16 and the Seahawks escaped with a 23-17 win. Two former Aggies play for the Seahawks, Robert Turbin and Bobby Wagner. Wagner continue, or contributed to the win by recording a career-high 15 tackles. I was able to catch up with the Seahawks star during his recent visit to USU. With the 47th pick, in the 2012 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks select Bobby Wagner, linebacker, Utah State. Bobby Wagner exploded onto the NFL scene in his first two seasons in the league with 260 tackles, five interceptions, and even came in second place for Defensive Rookie of the Year in 2012. Wagner is the most famous Aggie since Merlin Olsen to make the jump to the NFL, but he hasn't let stardom distract him from where he came from. It feels great, you know, to come back and see them still being successful, you know, with Coach Wells and everything, it's, uh, it's good to see. Wrapped up by the preseason Black Defensive Player of the Year, Buddy Wagner. During his four years at USU, Wagner was the catalyst of the Aggies' defense, winning WAC Defensive Player of the Year honors in his senior season and leading USU to their first bowl game in 14 years. The team's still doing good. Defense is still doing good, so I'm proud. Bobby Wagner made a name for himself here at Romney Stadium, finishing his career in the Aggie Blue and Fighting White with 443 tackles and four interceptions. Now he plays at CenturyLink Field, where he is one of the captains and vocal leaders of the fiercest defense in the NFL. I just expect a lot of tackles, a lot of interceptions, big plays. Um, you know, I just want to be a, a big key to the defense, and I feel like I'm doing a good job, but I feel like I, I could do more. Bobby Wagner, the rookie, was all over it. Fast and physical inside linebacker. Wagner can become the fourth ever USU player to win a Super Bowl ring and bring the city of Seattle their first ever Super Bowl and their first championship since 1979. So guys, you can watch Bobby and the rest of that Seattle team take on Peyton Manning and the Broncos in the Super Bowl. On February 2nd. I'm Should excited. Be a good yeah. I'm, pretty, I'm pretty excited. The best offense against the best defense probably in history even. For sure. It's, it's going to sure. be pretty, pretty amazing. Thanks, Jason. Coming up, Angie's is getting a new look. We'll show you how you can be a part of it.
And it's been a year, but a Logan tradition is back. Thanks for calling the GED Pep Talk Center. Jerry Stiller speaking. Your level seven in your face pep talk. I can keep pushing. Believe me, I'm good at it. Once you've got your GED diploma, you'll feel so good about yourself. You tell him. Mr. Trejo, can I transfer this guy to you? He needs something a little more... Persuasive? Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. Look at me. Hey. Raymond, look at Mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Maybe he can't hear us. Ooh. Maybe we're not stimulating him enough. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. Live with a human for a while and you get to know a few things. Like I know she does strange tricks for no treats. But the one thing I will never for the life of me know is how she gets so tiny and inside that box. Natalie, how do you get so tiny? Welcome back. Ice Ice Baby, a winter pastime, has returned to Cache Valley. We went to find out what yearly tradition has Logan residents braving the cold. Merlin Olson Park has been turned into a public winter ice skating rink for more than 25 years. People of all ages come to test out their skills on the ice, and for other reasons as well. To hang out with my friends. Hot chicks. Because it's good <laughs> exercise. I just think it's fun, like, skating around. Weather conditions last year stopped all plans for the winter wonderland just before the rink was ready to open. The rink is made from culinary water sprayed on the lawn from a hose, then allowed to freeze over the course of a few days. It requires temperatures consistently below freezing to get a solid base. Without these and other factors, the rink wasn't able to be operational last winter. But the ice is back for 2014, and the rink is crowded with little skaters. Ice skating is a fun family activity with the kids, but also makes for a great date night. It's inexpensive, exciting, and who knows, you might even get to hold her hand. Just hold hands when you go, yes. and then that's the trick. Some of the couples, it was a good opportunity for them to <laughs> show off a little yeah. bit. And it's just different than going to a movie and yeah. dinner. It's, you know, something different to do. Get out of the house in the winter, you know, go crazy just sitting around at home. That's it. It's just something fun to do. The ice rink is free and you can rent skates there for $3. It will be open as long as the cold weather sticks around. Angie's restaurant is known as the place where the locals eat, but now they're hoping to be the place where the locals paint. Right now, Angie's North Wall looks a little bare, but the restaurant's management is hoping to change that by holding a mural art contest. The theme for the contest is people, places, and times of Cache Valley. The goal is to draw iconic places in Logan that have been around for a while, like Angie's has been. There will be four different age groups of people painting, and judges will pick winners in each category to combine their art into a collage. Each of the individual artists will paint you know, whatever they like or whatever they painted for their original entry fee so maybe one one person will paint the Logan Temple on one side and someone else would paint the Jardine Juniper or, or something else like that. Angie's is encouraging everyone from the community to submit their artwork. Students from local elementary schools have even turned in some of their drawings that include pictures of Aggie ice cream, Old Main, Big Blue and more. All of the pictures are on display in the restaurant. Thanks for tuning in this week. Be sure to tune in next week for another edition of ATV News. Have a good day, Cash Valley.